I have titled my sermon from the inside out or inside out. Um, yes, from the inside out. And I want to start by saying um, that obedience without desire is drudgery. On the outside, it looks like success. But on the inside, it is slavery. I'll repeat, obedience without desire is drudgery. On the outside, it looks like success. On the inside, it is slavery. This is when, um, in instances that we are doing things because we ought to do things, not because we want to do them. Nikweli, that you're just doing this thing because we are, you know, um, there are repercussions, or rather, if I don't do them, there, are, there is a consequence of me not doing them. But in real sense, in my heart of hearts, I don't want to do this thing. Um, we are going to go to, uh, brief to, to the main reading of uh, today, Jeremiah chapter 31, from verse 31 to 34. It says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by their hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. Verse 33, I want us to read together from here. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 34. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. Let us pray. And Father, we thank you, King of all glory, for your word. We thank you for your word that is able to change lives, O King of all glory. And this morning we ask, O Jehovah, dear Lord, that you'll be unto us, O God, according to your word. That, dear Lord, you'll transform us, you'll teach us, O King of all glory, to the end, O God, that we'll be more and more like Jesus Christ, O Jehovah. I ask this morning that you'll forbid that anyone or anything should get glory in this place apart from your name, O God. You are the agenda of this meeting. Therefore, we ask you to take preeminence and to take charge. And it's in Jesus' name I do praise, I believe. Amen. Let us do a brief history. We go back to the story of the children of Israel. Um, Pastor Brian did a good uh, background on the same, the previous Sunday, how the children of Israel came to be the children of Israel. You see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, or rather Israel, then his, chi his children. Now these are the children of Israel. I want to go to it from a di uh, in a different angle today, and now on their relationship with God. Remember, God had already elected the children of Israel. In Exodus chapter 19, from verse 4 to 6, we shall read Exodus 19, verse 4 to 6. We see the election of the children of God, or rather the children of Israel. Uh, and in Exodus chapter uh, 19, from verse 4, um, Exodus 19, from verse 4, uh, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, and you shall be to me, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. You see God's election of them, that this was a promise that was given to somebody else before. Now that was the forefathers of these children. But God also comes and confirms to these people just in case they did not know, or rather they do not know how they came to be in the space that they were in. Why Moses had to lead them saying that their God, like the God of your fathers, the God shall be your God. They, if they did not understand, this was Moses. Now God giving Moses an instruction of what they are going to do, what, of what he was going to tell them, or rather bring them to par with what God was doing. So we see the election of the children of Israel. And we see, um, we see God, after they have been taken away from uh, captivity by Moses from Egypt, as they are journeying to, uh, through the wilderness. After, a verse, after chapter 19, we see in chapter 20, 
that God gives them a new set of laws, or rather a new set of rules. This is how I'm going to interact with you people from now on till the very end of time. And we see now the Ten Commandments coming up in Exodus chapter 20. And God gives them these laws uh, to relate with God. Uh, and after giving laws that relate with him, he also gives them laws that do what? Help them relate with one another. But, after, or rather, but after if, uh, while all these things are happening, after a short period of time, we see God again, Akio Mefanya Nini? Akio Or rather, we see the pastor of the church, Akio Mefanya Nini? Amekasirika. He was the, ah, somebody made a joke that who broke the most laws in the Bible? Yeah, Moses. Kavunja all ten at one time. <laughs> so yeah, we see the pastor of the church anakuja na shindo ai, washirika niliwacha and nimefika uku washirika mnafanya mambo mingi. Kwani ni nini inaendelea? And we see Moses breaking all the Ten Commandments. Why? Because the children of Israel had broken, or had, um, had done something else, something different that was not in the script that God had prepared for them. They had set for themselves a new God, right? And they had an issue with one person, not God himself. They had an issue with Moses because they said that Moses is bringing these laws to do what? To become a priest over them. That it was not God that was saying this, it was Moses. So they have a problem with Moses. And after Moses comes back, find them, they are idols, they are worshipping and they are dancing, they are making merry, breaks the commandments. Allah, we go back uh, and then we go back to God. Now God tells them that um, now for you to be again accepted, there is something that you have to do. What? There is something that you have to do. That it is no longer just, you're not just coming, you do not just have access. There is something, there was a cleansing that was to be done for the children of Israel to do what? To be accepted back again to God. And so God gives the details, or rather God gives the instructions of how they are going to go back. And again, he gives them a, a commandments again. But the heart of man, being desperately wicked as it is, they decide to do what? to go against whatever God is saying, right? We see that again, uh, they come and raise a contention against Moses, you, this is not what God is saying. Again, you're giving us laws to become a priest over us. We want to live our own lives. We want to do our own thing. That yes, there is the law of God. And remember, when God is giving the law, he's giving the law with very pure intent intentions that i will be king i love you. this is how you people are going to do what to live so through that um through the experience of the children of israel we see that god had always looked uh, when the law did not work as it was expected to work there was need for a contingent right there was need for a plan b because understand the law in itself um did not really work on the inside of the heart of man Cindy. The law did what? Addressed the result of an action. Sinequally. Like if I say, do not kill. That is the action, right? Not that the law in itself, at a, could not, uh, the law in itself was impure or anything. No. The law addressed the action. But what was needed, or rather what, was, uh, what had to change was the heart of the heart of man. And remember, as we say, um, uh, the heart of man was to have this virtue, like it should be flowing from within, that my desire to obey comes from a place of me wanting to obey, not because I am being told to obey. So God comes up with a contingent plan, says that um, now because you guys, sana ku obey, let us work, or rather let me see if tutafanya nini, to put a solution to this, and what is the solution? To see whether the heart of man can be done what? Be put in a place that it wants to obey by itself, not because it is being forced to do what? Not because it's being forced to obey. And so we see um, in Jeremiah chapter 31, from verse 31 to 34, God now gives now the solution, or rather he says that this is how we are going to get 
to that place that I will no longer now give them these rules. I'm not going to write them on stone tablets. Or rather, these rules and laws are not going to be on stone tablets. I'm going to put them in, in their hearts. So that the Lord now does not become something that is outside. It becomes something that flows from the inside. That the law now abides with the believer. Sindio. And what was the contingent? He decides to do what? To send the son. So through that history, we see that um, the solution now that was given was we will not now be looking at it. We will not be addressing the result of your consequence. And our pastor tells us most of the time, ukingia kwa nyumbu upate maji na mwagika, hauto imaji kwanza. Unendo unatafta malio maji na to? Unaziba hiyo shimo. Alafu unafanya nini? Unatoa maji. Sindio? And if we look again at the current or rather the new law, the new law that God was giving, does the same thing. It goes and addresses the, the issue at heart. It does not address the result. It says now because the issue is not the result, the issue is in the heart. And remember, Paul says the same thing, um, that that which I do not want to do, this I, this I do. In uh, Romans chapter 7, verse, uh, Romans chapter 7, from verse 13 to 25. And says, has then what is good become death to me? And now he's talking about the law. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it may appear sin, is producing death in me through what is good. So that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, do I agree with the law that it is good? But now it is not but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me, eating. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Verse 21. If I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body? Sini, yep. Who will the, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Uh, that's verse 25, yes. He says that, has then that which has become spiritual now be, has then that which is spiritual now become evil? No. What was spiritual had only one problem. It could not address the issue of the heart and for transformation to happen it had to come from the inside remember when the high priests were making or rather were performing these rituals or these religious rituals of cleansing they will go sacrifice a lamb sprinkled not to the heart but it was being sprinkled on the person so to mean that um, if, you, if I were to receive a blessing from God at that time, remember it was also a prerequisite that I'll have to have kept, to have done what? To have kept the whole thing for the blessing to do what? For the blessing to be released. So I had to wait for the high priest to come, do the cleansing, given that it was him that had the mandate ya kufanya your cleansing, or rather it was him that had the mandate ya kusmama between me and God and, me, uh, and be the mediator for me and God, he had to take up the he had to take up the role of being the mediator until Amesha Malizayo Kazia the cleansing or rather the pouring out of the blood on me. Then I will be right with God and I will go and tell God, Ah, Mku, so celebrate that we'll go to Mongolia. I think it's about time. Nisai, ni mekuja. Juu kika kaivi kidogo nta anguka na unajua ni hadi next Sunday ndio tukuje tu magiliwa damu tena. So I don't have the whole week. Sinona, so. That, that is how it, it works because 
No one else had access apart from the, the priest and the high priest. Because remember, even in the Holy of Holies, the priest, there was a place that the priest would enter, and then there is a place that only the high priest. Angefanya nini? Angefika kule ndani. Not all of them could go in the same. Nata kinge uko ndani, it was very chaotic. Because alikuwa nafungwa na kamba, sijui nini, mnaka uko inje tu mkingo jem, kisikia ungei mnavruta hiyo kamba, amjui kaa naenda uko wakigongwa na mabitu kwa kichu wakitoka. By the time is out, lab data amekufa. I mean, it was very chaotic. It was not something that you would also want in this day and age. But God does this. He brings the solution. What then was the solution to write the laws in the hearts of men? That our salvation now becomes, uh, or rather our obedience to God comes from a place of me desiring to obey. Why? Because God has already told me that. Now this is what is already available for you. What is remaining is to obey. If you are willing again and obedient, you do what? You partake of whatever God does made available so that now me obeying God does not come from a place of you ought to obey God. No, it comes from a place of I want to obey God. Paul says in, in, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15 says, and he died for all that, um, for all that, he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Uh, sorry, Second Corinthians. Yeah, five, five. So for those who live, uh, for those who live should not longer live for themselves, but for him who died for, for them. If you understand the sacrifice that Cal, uh, at Calvary, if you understand what Jesus had, has availed for us, then you understand the, uh, rather the weight of that sacrifice, which allows you now to live a life that is pleasing to God, not from a place of you must live this life, but from a place of, now because I understand, I want to live this life. Sindio, that is not becoming a place of, do. you are not living a, a righteous life from a place of do's and don'ts. Sindio, you understand that my righteousness now is a, pa, is a person, that I stand before, uh, before God justified, not by works, but because of the finished work of the cross. Because it says that he made him no sin to become sin so that we who knew no righteousness to be, Come righteousness. And what is the name of the person that became our righteousness? He's, be he's called the Lord, our righteousness. Sindio. And that is Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ takes our place, and now we are right with God. And now because we are right with God, we live this life wanting to please God, not because we, we are forced to please God, but because we do what? We want to please God by ourselves. It's stemming from a place of desire. My obedience now is not from a place of um, you are being pushed. My obedience comes from a place of desire. I want to do, ask to look at, at a few things, comparisons between the new covenant and the old. Um, the new law is a person, a person that we relate to. The second point is obedience to the law is not a prior condition for entering to the new covenant. Remember, previously, for you to enter the covenant, you had to have done what? Fulfill a certain or rather met a certain criteria, right? But in this he says, now come in, then fulfill it from the inside. Let me help you do this thing. That you're no longer leaning on your own strength, that you're no longer leaning on your own works. You are allowing God to do it with you. And you see, when we come to uh, leaning on works, it, makes us, it brings us to a place of being familiar with the things of God. Nikwili. In that place that uh, we were in a meeting some time back, and somebody said Habari Zenu, and somebody else answered Amen. We become familiar with the things of God, Sindio, that it flows out of us naturally because it was in a church setting. Uh, and I laughed at that person. And then later it happened to me. Somebody said, Praise God. And I said, Poor Sana. We have become, fa I had become what? Familiar. It's flowing out of me naturally that how does he make effort? Or rather like the church in Sardis, uh, in Revelation chapter 3, it says that you all have a reputation of being alive, but on the inside you all are dead. Why? I think it's because of becoming familiar with the things of, things of God. 
I'm familiar to the routine. I will come to church on Sunday. I will come on Wednesday. I will come to Bible study on Friday. Oh, and I'll come for prayers on Monday. Tuesday, sta kuja kwa sababu nikosel, or rather Thursday, sta kuja kwa sababu nikosel. So you meet me any day. Oh, praise God, Wanjala. Oh, amen, amen. God nimsu. But my heart is not there. That I come to church and serve, or rather I do things for God, but I do things like I do things around God, but I don't do things with God. Niko tu apa kwa mungu tu ni nazungu katu apa kando niko yes 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 praise God yes 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 mungu ni mso you know ah wake it up wake it up but in real sense my heart na mungu hayjuani so I'm just active yes but my heart is no is not in a place where God can say who you niwangu jupiam kendo kumbele kutokea na chindo ai pia wana kuanga pia na kuanga miyakoka why because the heart itself is not st- is not doing this thing from a place of desire it is now it has now become a culture nimesha conform i am now familiar with the things of god that they just float of me naturally na sio nizikiwa burden sam zinatokea tu kwa sababu nimeshazoea kufanya nini kufanya hizi vitu so obedience to the law is not a prior condition for this new covenant or uh, for entering this new covenant rather it is one of the promised blessings of the new covenant that now because i have god or rather now because i have help then i can do what i can obey uh, number three, the new covenant does not do away with or renounce the law it makes the law closer more important by setting it in the mind and in the heart instead of a stone tablet that it being in the mind and in the heart it becomes it comes from a place of i am relating with it i talk it to no coin it's not address it is no longer addressing results it's now addressing the root cause the virtue that is required for me to do what to obey or rather to live a right life with god the new covenant also brings inner transformation remember we said it's from the inside out because the only way that i will love my neighbor as i love myself the love has to come from the inside it's coming from the inside going to the outside now because i have love in my heart now i'm giving love to another person because god has extended grace to me i am extending that grace to another person because god has said that um i am accepted in the beloved then i'm also doing what bearing with another person's weaknesses sindio and i want us to understand three things number one, in the new dispensation or rather with the new covenant now having christ in your heart this is what it entails you are already blessed that you are not looking for god to bless you you do not have to meet a certain criteria for god to do what to bless you you are already blessed like that is part of um the package that is coming with the new covenant and how does it come it is me accepting christ me becoming one with god and then all these things are are availed for me that i'm no longer seeking and i love uh, when christ is teaching using the beatitudes in matthew chapter 5 verse 5 he talks about most of the things that are stemming from the heart of man you see when he says now blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness you do not hunger if you are already filled sinikweli now because there is a deficiency of uh, righteousness now you do what you hunger for that thing you desire to have that thing to be more and more like Christ to be more in uh, to relate more and in a deeper way with with him that it's not from a place that I've already acquired righteousness now at you I am z but now because we have Christ as our righteousness he brings that urge in us now that it's flowing from a place of I want to become more and more like him send you so now you know that we are already blessed that everything that god has said concerning the children of israel and us by extension by virtue of being born again with christ all, all of these things that god has already availed for them is for us also sindio but then what's the prerequisite requirement that i just accept jesus christ like that is the only requirement number two, you are already accepted that you are not struggling for god to accept you that you are no longer doing things around god that in your god akoni alafu aseme buleta ule kijana hapa he looks like a good guy i want to bring him into the fold 
No, but he comes, he adopts us, he calls us his own, because he says, uh, is it in John chapter 1 from verse 12 to uh, 13? For everyone that accepted him, alimpo wezo kufanya nini? Wakuitu wa muana wa mungu, sindio. Again, children not born of the will of the blood of flesh, but children born of the very will of God. That now because I'm already accepted, God is not ashamed to call me his own. Or rather, Christ is not ashamed that we are joined here with him. Then I am obeying God. Or rather, I am living this life to please God. Not because I want to earn something from it. Or, or rather, not because I want to uh, get something from it. Or I am looking for the acceptance. But because God has already accepted me in this state. What state? That me, still walking in darkness can still do what? Can still lean on God to help me walk to the light. Because he said, uh, and I believe that transformation is a process. You don't get transformed, then you get born again. No, you get born again, then God transforms you through the process. It's an everyday thing. Every day we submit to God like nothing is yet to be done. Sindio. Um, the way it says in heaven that the angels see God, they bow when I know on a holy, holy, holy. They bow and then, oh, this guy has gone to another level. And then they bow again and he's on another level. That it is every day we sing ourselves in light of what God is. That God is the standard of our transformation. That if I am not becoming more and more like God, then I am missing the point. The point is not to become like my pastor. The point is not to become like my friend. The point is not to become like my parent. The point is to become like who? God. Or rather, Jesus. That the third thing to note um, for this, uh, or rather want us to understand in this new dispensation, that we are already loved. Sindio. It is for God so loved there, that he did what? That whosoever shall do what? Shall do what? But, ah, thank you. You're good students of the Bible. So yeah, now because I'm already loved by God, Paul says again, now the love of God compels me to do what? To love on him also. Or rather, to live a life that is pleasing to him. Because I, am, I know in my heart of hearts what has been availed for me, or rather what God has done for me, the sacrifice itself, the weight of it, I, now, I am now living this life for him. Not from a place of again, you ought to, but from a place of I want to. It's not from a place of it's a must, but it's from a place of ah, no, because I understand. I want to live this life for God, or rather to live this life with Jesus. Sindio. And if umekachi ni ukaangalia, the more the rules are set, the more you want to be rebellious. Sindio. Some of us just rebel for no reason. You are just, in a tongue, we take offense for no reason. Umeambiwa, sasa uspiti hapo, mbono wataki tupiti hapa. Inji ya sinisi tunalipia na tax zetu. Eh, mbono wanafunga hii baraba. Labda yu barabara hapo mbele ikona shi? Ikona shi mo, sinona. But ukisha ambiwa hii barabara ikona shi mo hapo mbele. Hata utambiwa usipiti hapo. In fact, wendo utakuna ambia watu, avoid your barabara na kuanga na kashimu wapo mbele, zunguka na hii ingine. Sindio? Now it's from a place of desire. That you are already done what? <clears throat> you are already forgiven. Um, now because you are already forgiven, or rather because you understand the weight of what God has already done for you, you are not struggling to earn this thing. You are daily, sub, uh, you are daily submitting yourself to his means of cleansing, allowing God to work in you and to work in your heart. It uh, gives you, a, uh, or rather it releases you from the uh, bondage of having to do things, to do what? To be right with God. So that you don't feel holy on other days and other days you, uh, you feel unholy. At you may, you, so on one day you are coming to church and you're like, no, praise God, brothers and sisters. Manze, this week has been tough, but ni metoboa. On the other weeks you are coming to church and you're like, praise God, brothers and sisters. I want us to put aside one hour, we just repent. Hmm? It's a whole one hour of repenting and telling God, you know, God, before you bless me, I know ni mekosea hii wiki. And God, I know ni najua ni likanyaga malisi kwa nafaa. And God, anga what not, anga what not. And God is just there looking at you and saying, 
if you only understood that in the new covenant that as far as the east is from the west, so far have I separated you from your iniquities, right? That I will not remember them. I will separate you from them. And not only that, I will not remember them. That you can up with you, it's like, oh, ulifanya evil, by the way. Ah, I thought I forgave you for this already, but thank you for reminding me. So yeah, again, you're forgiven. I love you again next Sunday because you feel like the weight of that sin. Ish! He last man you be 40 days ndo ish. Ndiyo ni kuwe ni mesa mehewa ya ukweli. So nakujo na mwambia. By the way God, mina juwa ni liku ambi unsa. Mina na juwa nasema umensa mehewa, but nasema tu pole tena na juwa. We? Yo, yo mambo nilifanya ile siku, awezi kulinsa mea tu hivyo maramoja. And that's from a place of us thinking that God functions the same way that we function. But this is it. If there is anything that should give you an encouragement, is that it's always God's word that is on the line. If it is to fail, niyata jiangusha. Sindio? If it is to shame, niyata jiangusha. Why? Because it is his word that is always on the line. Unuzo, what are you banking on? Unazema, aha, this is my confidence. I know him whom I have believed. And I may say, I'm a man, I'm a man, therefore I'm forgiven. Oh, you say that I'm accepted. Ah, therefore I'm accepted. Sijali nini mtasea, mama, sijali nini mtafanya. Ah, ah, I know I am accepted. Oh, you say that I am loved already, that I don't have to earn the love. By virtue of me being, a, a, by virtue of me accepting Jesus Christ, I'm already done what? I'm already loved, that I'm the child of God, then it gives you so much comfort and joy. You walk, with God, you walk, you walk to God with boldness and confidence, having this in mind, that the Father still loves you as his child. Sindio, that he loved you the same yesterday, he loves you today, he will love you tomorrow. But this is the only requirement, that you do what? We continue to abide with him. That outside God, it is futile to think that we shall get any other thing that is beneficial. And as we see, these other things that the world can give, or rather these other things that we can do for ourselves, these things are just temporary. You come, unakuja, unakuwa holy for a week, alafu, now because you're leaning on works, you may die down the feeling. And now you have to recharge again for a whole week. And if you have been a believer, you know that that is the most hardest bit of it. When you're leaning on salvation, na? Ya works. Sindio? But if you accept this, that Jesus Christ had died, paid it all for you, and he says, you know what, now you have access, that it is not the high priest that is going in for you. The same, same access that the pastor has is the same, same access you have. The same, same access that the bishop has is the same, same access that you have. The same, same the, uh, success that the uh, mighty man of God has is the same, same success that you ha- the access that you have. Therefore, it gives you so much comfort, or rather it gives you so much confidence while you are approaching, approaching God. And remember, God says what? That we approach his throne with boldness. And what? Confidence. If you're going with any other thing, unatoa wapi? Yeah? If you're going with any other thing that is not boldness and confidence, how is that then beneficial to your relationship with God, because that way you're walking on eggshells. You're not sure even of what you're asking for because you're not bold and you're not confident enough. But if we understand, and I like to say this, that if we see God in light for who he really is, and then we see ourselves in light for, in light of what God says we are, then it becomes easier. Because if he's saying that I have loved you with an everlasting love, with loving kindness have I drawn you, then that's, then that's just it. Sindio, if as long as he says that as far as there is from the west so far have I separated you, then that's just it. Sindio, we are also seeing ourselves in light of that, that we are not seeking to please, um, we are not seeking to please or rather to earn these things, but because you already have Christ, these things have been made available for us. Now we want to dwell with God. We want to obey God. That it is not forced, it is wanted. Sindio, Sour, sour. So I'll come to the end of our sermon and I want us to pray. Um, I am praying for two people with our eyes closed and our heads bowed. If you're here and you've not given your life to Christ, 
or rather if you are here and it has been salvation by works each and every day trying to earn your space with God or rather trying to earn the love, trying to earn the favor, trying to be accepted every day. If you are here and this is you, kindly lift up your hands. If you are here and you've not given your life to God, lift up your hand. Sawa, sawa. If you're here and you're saying that, God, I want to do it with you, that, Lord, I know that I am loved, I know that I'm already accepted, and I know that I have been forgiven. Now I want to live this life not by works, but by the grace through Jesus Christ. If that is you, lift up your hand and we will pray for you. I ask our soul, let's believe as I pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we thank you, King of all glory, for your word. We thank you for your word that is able to change our hearts and to change our lives, O King of all glory. And this morning, O Lord, you have brought a conviction in our hearts, Abba Father, that, dear Lord, it is futile to do it by our own strength. It is futile to lean on our own understanding. It is futile, King of all glory, to lean on works, Abba Father. And today we are asking, O Jehovah, dear Lord, that you'll give us the grace to lean in and to trust in you, O Jehovah, dear Lord. That we will not continue, dear Lord, looking for salvation by works, but because we know that you have worked it out already, O God, we will have this boldness and confidence in you, O God, that we will trust in you, O God, that you'll give us the grace to abide with you, Abba Father, that you'll take us deeper and deeper in love with you, that you'll give us knowledge of your word, Abba Father, so that we'll know what Christ has availed for us through the sacrifice at Calvary, Abba Father. We pray, Father, for strength for days, O God, we continue to ask for your grace, O Jehovah, dear Lord, that is able to sustain us, Abba Father. We ask that you will continue to carry us through and through, O Jehovah, today, throughout the week, the months, O Jehovah, dear Lord, and all our lives, O King of all glory. We thank you and we honor you, Abba Father. For it's in Jesus' name I do praise and believe. Amen.